Hello, this is Talamere, and welcome to another Redstone video of the Redstone Scholar. In this video, we will be exploring transistors in Minecraft using Redstone. So this is something that has probably been done a few times already in the past, but from just a little bit of a, a, a precursor of search or whatever you want to call it, I haven't found much. The closest that I found to truly a transistor in Minecraft was actually in a mod and not in fact vanilla Minecraft. What I'm trying to do though is to make one specifically using redstone and no mods. So I do have some materials on hand, just a few that I'm going to be using. And first off, I think it would be best for me to explain what exactly a transistor is. So what exactly is a transistor? Well, they are what make a computer processor, the CPU, capable of processing data. So they do this by being able to produce either a one or a zero output, depending on two separate electrical inputs and one output. This is usually done using a, a two inputs, one that is low and one that is high. So this is done normally with current. So one might have, let's say, one milliamp, while its side input, being the higher one, could be 100 milliamps. And that would allow an output. Without that one milliamp though, there'd in fact be no output whatsoever. And what's important about them is that it allows the storage of that data. So it's either a one or a zero and that's stored, which is pretty cool. So you can wire multiple transistors together to form logic gates that can perform simple logical calculations. I will first attempt to make one of my own transistors using redstone, though I'm getting the feeling that it's basically going to be considered an AND gate. Let's give that a shot now. Okay, so I've made two so far, and I'm honestly not particularly happy with the outcome. They are basically AND gates. You've got two input powers producing one output. On the other hand though, this is, if you can look here in the top kind of right corner of the screen there, you can see it says targeted block. And then just underneath north, none, you see power, and that shows 15 as the power state. So yes, it is producing a full power, and that's using the power input, and a slightly lower 14 output. So that's that's interesting, but it's it's just not really what I'm looking for, because this, it's in itself, I, I think that we could make it so that that also can be uh, toggleable. And I think it should be, where both, both power states going in should be toggleable which would mean two inputs truly being utilized and not just one being a stationary input, one that's always on. So let's give that a shot next. So I've continued to do my research on um, transistors and I've remembered something that's obviously very important. The original use of a transistor is in fact an amplifier and that's something that's used in a lot of basically audio equipment such as stereos to go and make uh, that little bit of sound that's pumping out of your 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 cell phone or whatever you're using for your music uh, to be taken from a very small amount of power to much larger. That requires, in fact, two power sources for that to happen. So, although this is an AND gate, this is an AND gate. In a sense, this is also an AND gate. This would be considered a variable AND gate. Now, to make it variable, I would need to bring this out a bit more, and I, I, I am still playing with this. But the moment that you bring this out to, let's say, here, this turns what is basically an AND gate into a transistor. It is still an AND gate, but it is also a transistor because the input voltage, which is the lower one of the two, you got a higher power, and you've got a lower, this is what you want it to be at. You want it to be nice and powerful. And you've got the lower one down here. This is what you want enhanced. So here you put in some items. That's obviously nowhere near enough. You just got one power level out of that critter right there. So let's turn it into a bit more. You see that's still not enough to actually power it. This is at power one and that's at power two. Try a bit more. Did you hear that? There you go. Now this needs to be also turned on at the same time for it to finally power up. So that I believe is a transistor in a nutshell when it comes to redstone. What it needs is to make sure that there's something in the circuit that requires a certain level, I think this is the easiest way to do it, a certain, certain amount of items to produce 
uh, I guess you could call it uh, amperage levels. And that is what is going to determine it. So for this to even be usable, it needs to have a certain amount of items present in this dropper or whatever storage unit that you would like to use in order to push that up. It's not just not going to be there. Oh my goodness. I got a problem, guys. Quasi-connectivity, this is budded. Oh no. Do I want that to be like that? I guess the real question about it is, what am I using this for? That is really cool, actually, because that means that bit is in fact stored. That might be very useful, because that's not powered right now. Just go down there, just to remind you. See power? Power level? Power zero. It's not powered. That's a stored bit of information right there. That's That can be pretty useful. That, that's useful, but I don't know if that's actually what I want it to do. So the question now is, do I want this bit to re be remembered? In this occasion, I don't, but this is an option. So let's try this again. Right, that was easy enough done. It's a little bit bigger though. So maybe I might just do a little bit more experimentation around, but all I did was I put some glazed terracotta on the side, which cannot stick to slime blocks. And here we go. I've made this slime right here, just a little shorter for demonstration. There you go. You have both input powers and there's your output. So obviously you don't need it to be here. You don't even need it to be a lamp for the output to be what you need it to be. You just take it off of this redstone dust piece right there in either occasion and that'll do the trick. The question is from here, what do you use this for? You've got two power inputs to produce one power output. One absolutely must have a certain amount of items in some sort of container before this output is even produced. This one right here could be, let's say, I'm thinking storage system. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff that may, may be usable and my mind immediately goes to item sorters. And the reason why is because that is something that I am planning to make soon on on the Lithio SMP server. The question is, how would this be useful? Well, for one, you would have input the moment that you go and you turn on the item sorter, and then you'd have a certain amount of items required to be in the system in order for it to start to function in the first place. So that might be an idea if you're wanting to prevent lag. I'm still not sure. I, it's going to take some playing around with. But I like the idea of the transistor. It's something that I've been thinking on a fair bit uh, as I do do some electronics um, IRL. So there it is. I think that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. Just a very simple build if you guys want to try it out on your own. Thank you guys all for watching another video of the Redstone Scholar. If you liked the episode, please do leave a like. Those likes do good stuff for me. It shows YouTube that this video was worth watching. And if you want to see more of my stuff, subscribe. See you guys Oh, another video. Bye!